Welcome, everyone. Woo! This is it, right? This is it. Right? We've been waiting a long time for tonight. A long time. 71 years we've been waiting for tonight. This is FECON, and we're going to kill it. So, you know, my own view on this is like, well, pretty much, this has been an amazing conference. Thank you so much for coming. You know, I mean, it's been that good tonight, seeing old friends and meeting our fee ambassadors and I don't know. Doesn't it feel in some way like we're, we're, a, we're a family, we're a community? You know, right? Doesn't it? I don't know it's, if it's just me, but I don't know. I, I can't remember. I, I've been involved in, in Liberty stuff for, for, for a few years. Um, and I, I, I've never felt better about, about what's happening um, among ourselves and, and in the liberty community and in, in, in the world. And look, I'm telling you, the people <laughs> who are here, I mean, this is it. This is it. <laughs> you know? The minds, the people, the spirits, the creators, the innovators, the enthusiasts, the hangers-on. No, everybody's here. <laughs> We've got it going. <laughs> and I don't know. I, to me, there's a little bit of a poetry to the very existence of FECON, you know, because um, you, you have to look back at history. You have to think about the world that we came from and what made the world in which we live possible. And by the way, do you understand where you are? I mean, do you understand this is Hotlanta? <laughs> right? I mean, we're in what the Daily Beast, all right, fake news, but <laughs> what the Daily Beast called the cultural capital of the United States. This is what's happening in this city. This city is such a tribute to the human spirit. I mean, you know, what was it, like 150 years ago or something like that, uh, a, a general burned down the city. His name was Sherman. This really, this happened, no, it happened to us, right? They burned us down. And, uh, and then a lot of other terrible things happened. I won't bore you with the story, but Atlanta's been through hell and back. I can just tell you this, right? But... But look, you, you're looking around. You, you, you flew in or you drove in. You saw what's happening in the city. These beautiful, did you see this? These beautiful skylines and three downtown, midtown, Buckhead. It's absolutely glorious. What a tribute to human achievement and to the persistence of creativity and to the drive of the human spirit to create and serve each other. That's what's going on in Atlanta. And I tell you what, you can't even be here for a few days without absolutely adoring the way in which Atlanta is a tribute to the capacity of all people to get along and to get along and beautifully, right? It's, you know, I, I read every day on. <laughs> I read uh, every day online, it's like, oh, the, the poor should hate the rich, you know, um, uh, blacks should hate the whites, and, and whites should hate the blacks, and, 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 you know, I read all this nonsense, right, on the, inter you know, on the internet, but uh, Twitter, um, but, <laughs> but you live in Atlanta, you don't believe a word of it, because every single day, the activity, the energy, the creativity, and the, the life of this city is just such a beautiful living example of the capacity of society to organize itself. And you know, the great thing about the Atlanta, I, look, I never want to say anything good about government ever, but, uh, but the Atlanta city government is so negligent and so irrelevant <laughs> that it makes life awesome. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> right? It's, you know, nobody's going to bug you. And for that reason, we all love each other and we've built a beautiful civilization. So welcome to Hotlanta, the new center of civilization. And, <laughs> and, and more importantly, welcome to, um, listen, I, I have to say it. And I, and I do well up in, with a little bit of emotion about this. We have waited 71 years for, for tonight, for this weekend. So many people who have gone before work so hard, their whole lives dedicated to the cause that Fee represents, that you believe in. We, all of us here tonight, we are here because of their work and their vision. And who do I mean by they? All right? What? Oh, well, yeah, he's a cool guy, right? <laughs> yeah. But look, I mean, I, I don't want to tell you sad news, but I'm telling you, in 1946, a lot of things sucked in the world. All right, we, 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 we dealt with the Hitler problem, all right? That was kind of awesome. That was great. But other than that, there was censorship and price controls. Everybody was down on the dumps. There was rationing for groceries. Uh, rationing for groceries in 1946. Everything was terrible. Everybody believed that liberalism, the belief in, in a free society, was dead. It was gone. And a handful of people, and what I mean by handful, I mean like, not like a mob like we have tonight, but just like four or five people thought there could be a better way. We can inspire an intellectual revolution to recreate the world. The future is not given unto us. It is not dictated to us by the Marxists and the Keynesians and the deep state and the new school of social sciences and all this nonsense that they were preaching back in those days, we, if we believe the right things, can make a new world of freedom. And why? Why do we do it? For ourselves? For our families? For the country? But for the whole of the human race, for the human spirit, it must always and all times be set free from any controls from the center. This is the belief. Okay, you could say, well, that's a, that's a silly idea. No, it's a great idea. It's the thing that built civilization. It's a brilliant idea. And a handful of people rallied around it. Leonard Reed. And, right? Leonard Reed, God bless him. You know, he was an interesting guy because, I don't know if you know this about him, because he's, he's from Michigan. You know this place? There's a place called Michigan. Uh, and, yeah, it's kind of boring. But he started a grocery business there. And you know what's amazing about his grocery business? It flopped. It, it didn't work. Uh, and... He was so impressed by that. He was like, okay, we have a system in the world called free enterprise in which that tells me I'm doing the wrong thing. And he thought, you know, the whole world needs this idea. You know, some, th some system that tells us to do something better, a, a system that uh, incentivizes us to find the best in, of who, who we are. He learned so much from his failure. He went to the Chamber of Commerce in Los Angeles, and he began to kind of preach free enterprise. And, um, uh, and nobody cared about it, actually. <laughs> and, and he was kind of driven out of Los Angeles. He hooked up with a few, you know, very impressive entrepreneurs. Uh, Good, B.F. Goodrich, you know, the, of the Goodrich Tire Fortune, and, and so on. And they decided to start a think tank. You know, back in those days, nobody had ever heard of a think tank. What is that? Well, it's the center of, of ideas. Well, what are, you gonna do? what are you going to do? We're going to publish things. Well, why are you going to publish them? Uh, well, because we believe in, I in the power of ideas. If we can convince uh, people to believe in freedom, then we will 
get freedom. And a lot of people were incredulous, but not Leonard. He pushed forward with a handful of people. He brought in Ludwig von Mises and Henry Hazek and Lawrence Ferdig, and I don't need to go into the history. What I'm just telling you is this. They dealt with a hopeless, you know, a hopeless situation, and they decided that they were going to take on this thing we call the future and make it theirs. They were going to adjust history. They were going to change it. And how? Not through force, not through power, through, and not even through channels of influence, right? But just, and get this, just by saying true things. That was the whole theory. It's crazy, right? It's nuts. Say what's true, and then history will change. And they did. They did. God bless them. 1946. OK, look, none of you were born, right? I mean, whatever. It's long gone. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is the capital. This is, this is the, the investment that was made to make tonight possible. And I, every day, I have to say this. I am so, I feel so, uh, you know, say honored or blessed to be working uh, for this organization 71 years later. This institution dedicated to a very simple proposition that people should be free. Society can organize itself, that beautiful things c happen when people are permitted to exercise their, their creativity. So, I don't know. I mean, I think it's awesome that you're sitting in this chair tonight, that you've gone out of your way to come to this event at this moment in history. Because, you know, my friends, <laughs> you look around the world today. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it fascinating? They've tried everything else, right? The welfare state, the regulatory state, uh, let's have centralized control of medicine, let's try socialism and fascism, and, you know, every kind of system. It's all failed. And yet, the human spirit has pushed through, broken down, smashed the bureaucracies. And, you know, individual human beings have created, in our time, for you and me, and for billions of other people, a template that, that shows the way to the future. And it's all about freedom. It's about freedom. I mean, because of the world we're living in, every kind of pompous intellectual and powerful bureaucrat and status dictator and all the rest of it, today, tonight, they are trembling in fear for what's happening to the world. We're getting the freedom that Leonard only imagined abstractly in his mind. It is here tonight, and it is growing around the world. And <laughs> as I stand here tonight, I can tell you this. I can tell you the story of the rest of your life, which is you are an activist, an observer, and a doer in the cause of freedom, you will build and build and build something beautiful for yourself and for every generation that follows. We're done with socialism and with fascism and with statism and central planning and all the nonsense that has destroyed so many people and so many lives. We're done. The rest of your life will be spent dismantling the apparatus of power, deconstructing the bureaucracies, reinventing the structures of institutions and laws. That's our job. We have to. 
Look what Leonard did for us. Look what he did. He never even saw the results of his efforts. We, on the other hand, have all the tools and we see all the evidence around us. And it's a beautiful thing to be alive. Thank God for it or whomever made this possible, okay? Um, welcome to FECON. I see this as the great organizing center of this new world that's being born around the world, here and around the world, and you as a central player in this. Thank you for coming. And, you know, so the cool thing about this conference, I'm so excited about it. You've looked at the app, right? You've been getting notifications, you know, constantly. It's fun, right? It's, it's, it's you know you're, you're, you're doing the thing, right, once you sign up for the app. Um, nothing else matters. I'm getting texts constantly like, why the hell did I come to this conference? I'm like, yeah, well, you suck. That's why. Um, <laughs> so we've got a lot of activities, so many activities, so many things that I think are going to enrich your life. This is not just about um, one or two speeches, uh, although we have some amazing speakers here tonight. I mean, I mean, uh, for this conference, I mean, I mean, we've got Jimmy Wales. I mean, what, what can you say? Um, some incredible, incredible thinkers and doers here for you to meet. Um, never underestimate the value of each other, though. I, I hope that throughout this conference you will take time to meet each other and, and greet each other and, and, um, and, and, and extract ideas from each other, right? This is the real value. And I, I hope you learn. I hope you live well. Uh, uh, at Atlanta, uh, the love of my life, and FECON, the love of my profession. So tonight, I want to like to uh, start the conference by introducing to you our first, um, our first speaker. Yeah, he's over there vibrating and go, what the hell is this long speech you're giving? Um, <laughs> so I've enjoyed, uh, I've enjoyed him so much through the years. Um, Lou Perez is, is a creator of great media, a great media, right? Um, if you've watched his videos, you know, you understand. It's my pleasure. Welcome, Lou Perez. Jeffrey Tucker, everybody. Holy shit, you, you call me up right when I'm crying? That's what you do? My God, he just set the bar so high. He's basically saying, all right, you guys are going to go out there and change the world. But first, you got to listen to this dude's dick jokes. <laughs> Can we do it? Can I give you a dick joke? Can you go and change the world? Shit. Fantastic. This dude definitely has got his own dick jokes that he's ready to whip out at any point. It's been a lot of alcohol here tonight. Remember, consent, consent, consent. Non-aggression principle, everybody. There you go, ask and you shall receive. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> Fantastic, great, amazing. I, uh, I, I need to test the crowd, I need to test the crowd a little bit. How'd you guys feel about the Paris Accord not going through? How'd you feel about that? <laughs> Woo! Ho! Oh. Anybody a little pissed off that it didn't go through? You're pissed off it didn't go through? This girl's pissed off! I, I got to say one thing. I got to say one thing because I know it's a contentious subject. I know it's a contentious subject, but I got to say one thing. One thing. Whether you agree with the Paris Accord or you disagree with the Paris Accord, the one thing we can all agree on is that none of you read it. Am I right? I feel so passionate about the shit I haven't read. That's how I go out in the world. That's how I take the world on, all the time. It is, it is scary though, it is scary though. Guys, uh, it's the year 2017, so I'm told. And there are people today in this year, 2017, who believe that the earth is flat. <laughs> that is scary, that's some scary shit. There's, there's some scary shit. But what's even scarier is that I don't know enough science to prove them wrong. I don't even know how to edit for YouTube, man. Like these guys are putting together documentaries, documentaries, extra, extra quotes around there. It's nuts, it's crazy. 
We're in a very, we're in a very weird, uh, weird situation. Um, I've been hearing this a lot that uh, the world doesn't love our president. Like I heard that. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but like the entire world <laughs> apparently hates Donald Trump. Like, like that's it. And um, and you know what? I, I really think I chalk it up to to a lack of charisma, right? Because because like whether you guys whether you guys like President Obama or not. You can't, you cannot, you cannot fight the fact that that man had charisma, right? That man had so much charisma that he could spend eight years droning countries and the surviving family members are like, please kill me! Like that, so much charisma. I know, I know, that's how much charisma. You have to cover your mouth to be like, holy shit, that's a lot of charisma. There is not one person in Yemen who wants Donald Trump to bomb their wedding. Like, but Barack Obama, shit, it's almost like he was a guest. The worst wedding guest ever just came through. You know. But it, it's, it's a little nuts, though, with, uh, with uh, you know, like presidential power, because one thing that, that, you don't, that a lot of people don't realize is that all the powers you, you gave to the old president, the new guy gets. And I know when, when Trump came in office, a lot of people were like, oh, shit. That, oh, that, that's not good, what just happened. Right? Because a lot of people forget that Barack Obama had a kill list. You guys remember the kill list, right? right? Now, that means that Donald Trump has a kill list. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. I think Barack Obama's kill list is probably cooler than <laughs> Donald Trump's kill list. Like, if you went through, like, Barack Obama's kill list, right, when it comes to terrorists, he has like the Beyonce's and Jay-Z's of terrorists. On his. I bet Donald Trump literally has Beyonce and Jay-Z on his kill list. It's all right, I'm losing some of you, but I gotta get you back somehow, because we gotta change the world. We're gonna have to change the world in some way, in some manner, in some form. Um, yeah, I don't know how many of you guys um, have seen um, videos that I, that I produce. I produce videos for We the Internet TV. I don't know if you got any fans? Any fans of that? Okay. A lot of people are like, not anymore. <laughs> After the joke about death, I'm not, I'm not with you at, at all. I, I understand that. I, I, appreci I appreciate that. Um, but uh, we have like a booth set up and stuff with swag. I, I was told that I was supposed to like promote this um, to you. I probably picked the worst time. Like I was, I was doing pretty well and then I just broke just broke protocol. That that was a little it was a little nuts. I uh, I hope you guys appreciate that I got uh, I got dressed up for you today. Uh, I heard it was hot, Atlanta. That was it. Uh, I got I, I uh, I'm I'm doing a little something on my beard. This uh this beard's a little intense right now. It's growing. I, I think it's it's getting a little too long. And um, see, I I have to be really careful with my beard, uh, guys, because if I let it grow too long. I start to look like the creepy guy who's too old to be hanging out at the skate park. <laughs> Do you know the guy who's like, hey, you kids want me to buy you some beer? <laughs> or teach you how to kiss? Like, I start looking like that guy. <laughs> that guy's the worst. You don't want to look that, I don't, don't want to look like that guy. We, we're on the same, we don't want to be two of those guys in the skate park. <laughs> guy's like, oh, I'm getting away from the one, and then boom, right into your arms. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, uh, I'm from New York originally. Anybody here from New York? Anyone make the trek down? Look at that. Where, where in New York are you from? Look at that. You were born in New York City. Fantastic. And then, and then you just ran away from something. You've been running ever since. Yeah, it's all good. So, well, well, I'm glad you're here, man. You're part of the Army. That's fantastic. It's awesome. So I'm, I'm from New York originally. I went, to, I went out to Los Angeles uh, a few years ago because um, I wanted to be in a commercial. No, it didn't work, man. It did not work. It did not work. But I, I went out there and I, I got I got a commercial agent, which is like a big thing. It's like a it's like a it's a big step. Commercial agents send you out on commercial auditions where you fail them, and so that's where that's where I got there. Um, and lately, uh, they were sending me out for the role of Hispanic dad. <laughs> which is that the vibe I'm giving you guys right now? Like Hispanic dad vibe like that. Not really, but I kind of get it. What's that? Like the new 
That's right, he's not even Hispanic. He's culturally appropriating millions of dollars like that. No, no, it's all, it's all good. No, it's all good. No, I kind of get it. But, but the thing is, I kind of get it, right? Because my last name is Perez, right? But I like to describe myself as conveniently Latino. Like, I don't give a shit about being Latino unless it's like the World Cup or I'm stealing your scholarships. Yeah, give them to me, yeah. Someone didn't get into NYU because Luis took your spot. It's my full name, Luis Perez, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I get, a, I get, a, uh, I get extra laughs, so every like, one laugh is worth actually two laughs because it's like a quota system, it's cool. It, it, it's all good, no, it's all good, it's all good. But part of me, like, I wonder that that commercial they're sending me out for, the Hispanic Dad commercial, like, what does that sound like in their head that they're sending me out for, you know? Am I in, like, an open field? And I'm like, we are a proud people. For decades, we have suffered injustice. My son, Manuelito, has witnessed it firsthand. My shirt is stained with the blood of my comrades. But we are united tonight. And the tide is turning. Thanks to Tide Ultra Stain Release. <laughs> Mas Gris, si se puede. Si se puede. Uh, that's what I was thinking. But, um, uh, yeah, I went, I went out to L.A. too because I, uh, I really wanted to be in movies too. Um, I'm available if anybody is shooting any movies and stuff. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to be in movies. And um, I don't know about you guys, but my favorite movie, and it, uh, kind of movie, and it's, um, it's a little corny. But I love like body switching movies. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? F what? Face Off? Face Off wasn't a literal body switching movie, sir. They just switch faces. Okay. I don't mean I don't mean I don't I don't mean to shit on you in front of your friends and family. But but don't speak up with that bullshit ever again. Never talk face off to me to my face. No no no. You're 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 wrong. But um. No, the body switching movies, my favorite ones, are the ones where, like, the mom and, like, daughter switch bodies. Yeah, Freaky Friday or the, or the, or the father and son, vice versa, if any of you were uh, born in the 80s. So I had this one idea for a movie I was, I was going to pitch about a grandfather and a grandson who switch bodies, right? And, uh, it, and if, I, if, if you're cool with it, I want to read you the first part of the script. Uh, yeah. Thanks. It, it's narrated uh, by the grandfather. I'm just going to need you guys to shut up in front. That, 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 just for this part. Just for this part. Just for this part. Just, just for this part. Okay? So it's narrated by the grandfather. And it starts out like this. <clears throat> the best part about switching bodies with my grandson was getting to play Little League Baseball again. The worst part about switching bodies with my grandson was having to watch him die in my body. <laughs> Do we got a hit or what? I have a Kickstarter for it if anybody wants to be cool. All that. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I, I, I gained some of your love and affection and then I quickly wipe it out. All that. It's all good. I, um, like I said, I'm from New York, and um, it's very lonely uh, to be living in New York uh, as a libertarian because I am the only libertarian in New York <laughs> who I want to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, you guys know who you are. You're weird. I was told at midnight we were, we were going to try to raise Ayn Rand from the dead. What? <laughs> What's going on at midnight? Freaks? That? Yay. She's, she, she's still living in our hearts. No, um, but it, it's, really, it's, really tough. Uh, it's really tough because I, I try to make friends a lot in New York. And, uh, you know, I, I try to make friends with liberals all the time. And I, and I go to them and I'm like, oh, come on, guys. We agree on all the fun stuff. <laughs> Drugs and prostitution. I just want you to pay for your drugs and buy your prostitutes with Bitcoin. Like, can we... <laughs> and get a gun. Like, it, it makes everything a little bit more fun. Like, if you just, if you just do that. But um, what I found is, uh, is definitely the portion of the population that's real hardcore 
are libertarians. And uh, I don't know if there's like a competition between li like libertarian states and all that, but um, I found some of the hardest core libertarians in New Hampshire. Anybody been in New Hampshire? Woo! Woo! Man, like every week there's a vote to secede. Like, man, you guys are hardcore. And I went, I went to this, uh, I went to this festival. It's called Pork, uh, Pork Fest. I don't know if anybody hear about that. I went to that like seven years ago. I, w I was uninitiated, right? This was like, this was like hardcore into the uh, libertarian, um, you know, the, the the center of of the storm. And I went to this one, and um, there was a panel discussion on school choice. How do we feel about school choice? Woo! Woo! Wow. You guys, I, I, you guys are so excited about that. Awesome. So, so at, at, some, at, at, at the end of it, there's a Q&A session, right? And, and in the back, this big burly guy gets up, and his beard is like the size of me, right? And, and even his beard is open carrying. Like, he's got two pistols. <laughs> this dude is ready to roll. And he picks up the mic, and he goes, Rrrr. like, that's him. Make, I think that's his name. And he, he gets to the mic and he says, don't you think it's about time that we water the tree of liberty with the blood of our tyrants? This is a fucking school choice panel, man. That's where the revolution starts? And I don't know about this tree of liberty, man. Could we at least smoke it? Like, <laughs> so I don't know if I can fight that hard for just like, I don't know, like a, a rose bush. I'm trying to think of, I don't know many, many things about bushes and all that. that I don't have much time uh, to be up here. Uh, one, 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 thing, uh, one thing I will say is um, one, of the, one of the most amazing things about being a libertarian is that every four years, you know that no matter what happens in an election, you're going to be unhappy. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's like, that, that's an amazing kind of depression. I accept that. I don't need any Zoloft. I'm handling my shit. But what I hate so much about, um, about politics is that it, it's so divisive. But also what I find is, is I have friends of mine who are Republicans. I have friends of mine who are Democrats. And I find that politics make them complete hypocrites, right? <laughs> What I found is that like my friends end up like defending their guy, you know, for stuff they would never defend anybody for, right? Just completely unprincipled stuff. And it really hit like the, you know, the apex of it years ago. I don't know if you guys um, have heard of this man. Uh, he was a governor of New York named Elliot Spitzer. Anybody Elliot Spitzer fans right there? Well, you might know him as client number nine for those of you who know that, right? So a friend of mine, he got, he, um, Elliot Spitzer got in some trouble, and a friend of mine uh, was defending him. And I said, hey, man, it's, don't you think it's a little messed up that the governor, who used to be the attorney general, who used to be um, a district attorney, was prosecuting prostitutes while at the same time paying prostitutes for sex? And my friend looked me dead in the eye and went, they weren't the same prostitutes. <laughs> you cannot argue with that kind of logic. But I'm sure sometime this weekend there will be a panel on how to argue against that kind of logic. Guys, thank you so much for help, letting me kick off FECON with you. We got a great, a great improv group coming up. I don't know who's introducing them. Hopefully somebody is. Um, I will. Them? What's that? I will introduce them. You will introduce them. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> thank Thanks, you, guys. sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Atlanta's premier improv theater, Dad's Garage. Hey! Hi, everybody! Yeah! Hey there! Hi! How are you guys doing? Yeah. Excellent! As you heard, we are Dad's Garage Theater Company. We are an improv and comedy theater here in Atlanta. And uh, I'm Matt. With me I have... Tara. And I'm Mark. And this is Dave Thank on the you. keys. Give it up for Dave on the keys. <laughs> We're going to do some improv for you guys tonight. Round of applause. How many of you have ever seen any improv before? All right. All right. Who's never seen any improv before? There's still like Very eager 10 people back. left. Great. Well, the th if you haven't seen it before, the thing to know is that we don't know what we're doing. 
uh, mostly we're going to be making stuff up. We don't really know what's going to happen. We're just going to make stuff up up here. You guys are going to provide some vital information to us through uh, ideas and suggestions that we get from you and use in our scenes, or we may even bring some of you up on stage here with us. At, uh, don't worry. You'll, we'll put you back in your chairs in the same condition you were in before we got you. Uh, so you guys will be playing a big part of this show as well. So uh, I said earlier we might get ideas and suggestions from you guys. We'll do that most of the time just by throwing out some questions to the group at large. We want you just to hear the question, think of something, and shout an answer to us, the first thing that comes to mind, and we'll take something that we hear and we'll use it up on stage. So if I ask you what your favorite show on television is right now, you'd think about that, and you'd all yell! Great. Awesome. A lot of great answers. All, all Netflix, all Netflix. Yeah, I heard Westworld from over here. Uh, oh, or yeah, if okay. I asked you what your most hated vegetable is, you'd all yell. <laughs> great. They're all. Uh, you're you're all correct. They all suck. That's great. <laughs> Super. So yeah. So we just take something that we hear and we we use it up on stage. Great. So I think uh, unless you guys have anything you want to address, I think we're ready to get rolling. No, I think yeah. everything's been addressed yeah. well before we got here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the first thing we're going to do for you guys is just tell you a simple story. There'll be one of us standing here in the front telling you a story as a specific character. But at any point during the story, any of the other uh, performers can jump up and tag the, uh, the monologist out and pick up where they left off. Pick up in mid-word, mid-sentence. Uh, mid-phrase. Uh, we'll keep telling the story. Uh, Ad nauseum until we get enough laughs so we're ready to go home. So we'll go faster and faster until the story turns into an unrecognizable mess. So, yeah, that's what you're here for. Uh, what is something that would uh, what is something that would be big news in a small town? A lot of people yelling incest here. That's statistically too many people are yelling incest. So we're gonna go with murder. I think murder is good. Yeah, right. it's sli slightly safer space. Yeah, it's just a. A less, a less uh, stomach-turning crime. I okay, mean, murder. we are in the South, so... All right, so this will be m about murder in a small town. I think that's all we need. So uh, help us count down. We'll see this in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Hello there. My name's Myrtle Johnson. I've lived in this town my whole life. About 78 years on planet Earth, and I've, I've seen a lot of things in my time. I've seen a chicken walk backwards. But let me let me tell you about one thing I've seen that no one has believed since. It was a couple years ago. A warm summer day with rain, kind of like. Bullets rain. I probably said rain. Not real clear. But rain like bullets. I was sitting on my porch, just rocking back and forth in my favorite rocking chair. When I seen that little Wentworth kid come a skip straight down the street, he was riding a bicycle with three wheels. A three wheel bike, a tricycle, a tricycle if you will. <laughs> he was a bit of a smart ass to myself sometimes. <laughs> so I kicked my own ass and then I waved at that Wentworth boy. And after I waved at him, he proceeded to ride right into my yard and right over my bed of petunias. Why he, why he had no regard for my petunias. Little good petunias, like nice petunias and like ancient petunias. And he just ran them right over. He was covered in blood. That's the part of the story that's interesting. He was covered in blood and I rushed to him. Uh, no longer upset about the petunias, worried for the little Wentworth boy. I grasped his head and shook it. <laughs> he... And he was dead. He's gone. <laughs> I, perhaps I shook it a little too hard. <laughs> so I had to figure out why, how. I had done it. I had taken it and I. I, 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 I snapped it. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> so I put him under my petunias. <laughs> And those suckers are growing like crazy now. <laughs> they are growing so fast. A huge petunia tree. I'd never seen such a tree before. So then I realized I needed to get more bodies. 
Stop there. Scene. Stop there. Scene. All right. Story of a sweet old lady that. Oh, that was a lady. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I think her name was Myrtle or something. Yeah. Myrtle. Good sweet boy. old lady. All right. Uh, so great. Uh, we started off with a cold-blooded murder of a small child, so we're just, it's up from here. Hey, you know what? There was no incest in that story. That's true. We don't know why he was covered in blood when he came into the story. Oh, though. Lord. Oh, that's true. Well, now we have it. Yeah, okay. Now we've all had that image. <laughs> so uh, we're going to need, actually, we're going to need some help for this yes, mess. Okay. Uh, so Mark and Tara, oh, would you guys actually go yes, please. get a couple of uh, sure. unwilling volunteers? I'm going to put that on you. <gasps> Oh just, my just gosh, you guys want to play? Come on up, come on up. What's your name? Yeah. Okay, Corey, I'm just going to grab one. So, yep, Corey, come on up and oh, uh, join me. Uh, sir, would you be willing to join us up on stage? Yeah, would you be willing to join us? I mean, oh, let's give it up for him. Fantastic. Come on up, Corey. I'll tell you. We'll tell you in just a second. It's real yeah. easy. This is Corey. Hey, Corey. Excellent. Yeah, yeah Corey, come over here if you would. Just stand right, right this way, sir. Uh, well, I don't know if it's on. All right, we got Corey. Uh, what's your name, sir? Tom. Corey Tom and Olsen Mark. Who, who do we have? Uh, Tom. Corey and Tom. Big round of applause. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Tom, if I can oh. get you right there. Mark, Matt, it's uh, both Italian. Great. We've got a reunion of the old country. This is awesome. Uh, uh, Corey, if I could put you right over here. Now, Corey and Tom, you two are going to be very important in this next scene. We're going to be uh, doing a scene as we normally would, but there are going to be various times where we're at a loss for words. We're not going to know what we want to say next. And we're going to look to you. We're going to make eye contact with you when that happens. All right? And what we want you to do at that point is provide the next word, sentence, phrase. But here's the easy part. You don't actually say it. You just silently mouth the words to us. And we're going to try and lip read what you say. Right? So it, it could be something very simple, like uh, I'm so thirsty, I could use a glass of Coca. <laughs> great, great, <laughs> super. You just you just uh, silently Perfect. mouth the words, and we'll uh, try and make it make sense. Or it could be a little more complex, like uh, the quickest way to make a ton of money is Mark Schuster's pants. I don't know who Mark Schuster is, but thanks for the information. Great, great. Okay, so you get the hang of it. Just silently mouth the words, and we'll try and read your lips. You two just stay right there, and we'll come to you or make eye contact when we need you. Great. So um, for, for our scene to get started, what, what's something that uh, you're looking forward to doing with a friend uh, soon? A music festival. I heard a music festival. I, I, all right, great. Music festival. Music I'm, all, festival. I'm glad people are excited about voting, but that's just separate. Like, just that is just a feel-good moment for me. Good, good. Okay, so, uh, gentlemen, Tom and Corey, you guys stay where you're at, and this will be a scene somehow involving a music festival. We are ready to go. We'll see this in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. <laughs> oh, man, this is the best music festival. <laughs> I'm so excited to see the next band of, the next band is called... Matters math, man. Matters math. Oh man, man, they're so good. They got that. They got that really good song that's yeah. been playing on the radio. It's called. Yep. It's called Buck Your Mom. Oh man. I don't know. It's like. It's like a buck. Uh, I guess you pay her a dollar for taking such good care of you. That's why I like Math Matters, because yeah. it's just like there's so many potential meanings yeah, of all their exactly. songs. Oh man, they're starting up a new set here. You know, Victoria, yeah, I just Lenny. gotta say the fact that you like came to this music festival with me, it means so much. This is easily like the highlight of my freshman year of college. <laughs> Lenny, uh, I brought you here for a reason. What? Yeah, and I thought it'd be a really good place, like a loud, noisy place where you can barely hear people to yeah. tell you the truth about how I feel about you. What? Yeah, can you... Yeah, I'll just be really loud about it, Yeah, okay? no, I got it. Here's the thing, Lenny. This, I, I feel like... I, yeah, yeah, maybe mouth it. Try it again. Now, okay, you're... You're whole perfect. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that means so much to me. Like, before I thought, like, certain parts of me were perfect, but not the whole human being. Yeah. And so it's just like the fact that you appreciate my whole body, or my whole being, rather, makes me feel... 
uh, you know, just like, uh, like I could go on a journey with you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we totally feel the same way. Yeah, totally. Like, you know what? When I first saw you, I thought, life. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy because... The other night, I was writing a poem about you, and, what? and it, 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 it went like this. Roses are red, violets are blue, and you're really cute like a sarlock. Oh my gosh. I'm into Star Wars. I, I feel... But I mispronounce it. You know, I, I feel so inspired. Like, is it okay if I just give you a poem as well. I would love to hear a poem. Here's one I have for you. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'll start with your opening and then do a new closing. So okay. like, roses are red, violets, violets are, are blue. blue. You're fantastic and at least cute too. <laughs> you know, I, I've, been, I've been lying, this isn't, this isn't Coca-Cola, I mean it is. There is Coke and ice in here, but at the bottom, ugh, <gasps> I have my mother's ring. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is moving really fast. Look, I know, but it's just like, Math Matters set is going to be over real soon. And I figured the perfect moment to propose is during one of their concerts, you know? <laughs> oh my god, like, this is the most beautiful moment of my life. I always dreamed that I would get engaged somewhere exotic, like Canada. <laughs> but uh, my world just got so much bigger when I met you. Oh my gosh, this means so much to me. It's like my dreams are coming through. Listen, or coming true, rather. And they're also coming, <laughs> coming like, through, like literally, man, because we took that mescaline like about a half an hour yeah. ago. Listen, it's totally coming through. Victoria. Would you be willing to be with me forever? Would you be willing to be my wife? Lenny, I made love to you already. <laughs> that's what I'm basing this decision on. Oh my gosh, that's what happened this morning. Oh my goodness. Steve, what's <laughs> out there? Big round of applause yeah, for all of you. Great job, man. Super funny. Good job. Have a seat. Thank, thank you. you. Viva Italiano! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think that's what they say. <laughs> hey, all right, how, about this, how about this bacon backdrop? I like it. Yeah. I, I feel like it's like undulating bacon. All right. Oh, we're doing the interview? Great. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, guys. I'll, yeah, I'll set it? this one up. Absolutely. So, guys, we have a special treat for you. We have brought an expert with us, uh, and the great, and I'm going to do an interview with this expert. Um, and, but the interesting thing about this expert is, is that this expert speaks in one voice. Two heads, one voice. Um, so we just need a suggestion from you for something that this expert is an expert on. And let's make it something that you wouldn't normally be an expert on. You know, something unusual, like, I don't know, bubblegum or Wednesdays. or Yeah, you are really excited. You've got a great idea. Everybody be real quiet. What is it? The Neolithic Patriarchy. Ragerarchy. Matriarchy. Someone here, someone here yelled raisins. Okay. I just, I want to appreciate that you have like, you had locked and loaded Neolithic matriarchy and you're like, at some point, this is gonna be the ideal suggestion. Guys? We want raisins. God damn it. <laughs> Fine. We'll find a way to fit it in. Um, we will see this expert interview about uh, raisins in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Welcome, everyone, to really old wrinkly things. I'm uh, your host, Ellen DeGeneres, and I... Just don't sound like me today. So I'm here with our foremost expert on raisins. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, Hi I'm my name, name is Dr. Rohrforfen. Dr. Rohrforfen, and, and I'm, I'm an, an expert, expert on raisins. raisins. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having me on your show, Ellen. I'm, I'm a, a big, big fan. It's my turn. 
my pleasure. We have to fill a lot of time so things get really hairy in the uh, guest department. Uh, doctor, why don't we go ahead and dive right in. What is it about raisins that just drives me nuts when I find them in pudding? Oh, well, everybody loves raisins, especially in pudding. Raisins are great in cereals, salads, cereals, sandwiches, and sin. The five S's of raisins. The five S's of raisins, actually the title of your new book. Oh, yeah. The, the five, five S's, S's of raisins. The, the book has all kinds of things in it. it. Special tips and, and, and frequently asked and questions, questions portions, and, and also, also a do not do, do section. section. I think that's what we want to dive right into, the do not do section. Oh yes, yes. There, there are three main things to never do with raisins. Raisin. Right. Number one, give, give them to your, your grandma. grandma. Number two, a, a hanging lantern. lantern. Number three, snakes bait. bait. Snake bait. Snakes hate, hate raisins. raisins. So, so don't, don't use them as a snake, snake bait, or, or you won't catch any. Snake. <laughs> fascinating, absolutely fascinating. But I want to, I want to dig in a little bit deeper here because there was a time when you tried to give your grandmother a raisin. Oh yes, poor Nana, rest her soul, <laughs> rest his soul, and Nana. I thought it would be a good idea to give her some raisins, but what I didn't know was that Nana had a heart attack, and I tried to give her raisins, it made it worse. She died from a heart attack and a asphyxiation on raisins. I should have called the ambulance. I, I live with, with that every day, so I made a vow to never give raisins to a grandma again. In fact, anytime I see a raisin, I eat it so a grandma can't have it. Ellen, are you a grandma? Give me that raisin. Save your life. It seems like you've uh, g gained a bit of cult status among Raisin fans. Oh, oh well, yeah, yes. yes. I, I have, have lots of people that, that call me a Raisin King. <laughs> the Raisin King. <laughs> then they're, they're they're calling me all the day, day all night, knocking, knocking on my door, door being like, like, hey, hey Raisin, Raisin King, King got any raisins? raisins? Uh, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Him. I give them to him. <laughs> Unless you're a grandma, then, then no, you, you can't have one. one. The California yeah, Raisins brought me on tour. I got, I got to open for them. them. I played a uh, harpsichord. <laughs> sang yeah, an original, original raisin song. You, you want to hear a raisin song? I would. Uh, would we like to hear a raisin song? I think we would. <laughs> Ooh, I bet you wonder how I knew about your plans to give your grandma a raisin. Give me that raisin. Go, 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 go. Save your grandma. I heard it on the raisin vine. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, in retrospect, I regret asking to hear that. It, 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 it's, um, it's unfortunate uh, that raisins have had a bit of a decline. But you oh, do have yeah. a strategy to bring them back, and I, I think we could probably close with that because that is quite a plan. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, we gotta, gotta make, make raisins hot again, again with, with millennials. millennials. Millennials love social media, so, so I created, created a Raisin Facebook page. Oh God. It's, it's already, already got, got four likes. 
by the end of 2020, it should have five. I've been working on this page for four years. I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are too. The next thing I'm going to do is get all the grapes and put them in a cellar. Put them in a cellar where they'll turn into raisins. Got to build a population. Wow. It seems like uh, the New World Order is only moments away. Woo, it's, it's already, already here. OK. Your enthusiasm is really overwhelming. Is there anything you want to uh, leave with our guests, so some parting words? Yeah. yeah. If, if you, you are thinking, thinking about trying to raise this, never is the, the time. time. Unless you're a, a grandma. grandma. Give me that raise. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank no, you no, so no. much, and good night. <laughs> Oh boy, we learned we learned a lot about raisins yeah. just then. I think we need to stretch out. Should we do a little moving body? Thing? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's get one person. Mark, Mark, would you get us one oh, helpful volunteer? Yeah, of course. There's someone. Uh, yes, a, someone with a. a th this is our, our, our friend that offered us turkey. That's and true. That's sauce true. Would you be willing to join she us? She wants stage? Excellent. to Great. play. Yeah. Excellent. All right. All right. Watch Great. Hi. What's here. your name? And, yeah. What's your name? One more time. Sandra. 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 All right. Way, Great. Sandra. Sandra, come on up here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's give Sandra, Sandra a round of applause. All right, Sandra, here's how it's going to work. Uh, our improvisers in this next scene are going to be unable to move their own bodies. They're right. going to be puppets in your hands. Um, so you will be making them do all the movements. We're going to practice just a little bit to make sure that you're not a psycho-violent killer person um, and have a general understanding of how this is going to work. So, for example, uh, if you wanted to get Mark to wave hello, how would you do that? There it is. Good. And <laughs> wherever you, there, yep, there you go. You can manipulate that. And wherever you leave them, that's where their hand will stay. They're just like a little putty. Um, and you can get him uh, to, uh, yes, you can get him to hold his boob. Um, you can, that, that's, that's a good point. It was, it was a little lower. Um, so you can get him to look around by gently turning his head. You want to give that a try? Oh, yeah, he, he, that's nice. <laughs> All right, yeah, you, you, yeah, he not, there you go, you got him to nod, great, good, good, good. Um, you might also want to uh, make them walk, so uh, the way to do that is, yeah, we'll test with on, uh, Matt here, you'll tap the back of his knee, and he'll step forward with that leg, yeah, great, <laughs> try the other one, see if it works, yep, that works, okay, good, and if you want him to walk backwards, you'll tap the front of their knee and make them do a split. Um, actually, that's a good point, let's go ahead and pause right there. Um, Rip. All right. <laughs> good. Uh, so that's actually a good point. We want to make sure that uh, whatever you do, uh, please don't um, make them bend in ways that their bodies are not intended to do. Keep in mind that they are older, right. um, so they can do less than they used to be able to. Um, and maybe don't uh, poke any sharp parts and soft parts. You know what I mean? Got it. Oh, we'll do that later. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, let's go ahead and get a suggestion. Oh, woo, woo. We're in the Omni. Um, let's get a suggestion for this scene and let's make it something, a uh, physical activity. What's a fun physical activity you might do on the weekend? Baseball. I heard baseball. Baseball. Yeah. You like baseball? Yeah. Great. It is baseball season, so we'll take baseball. Um, Sandra, do you feel comfortable moving these guys around? Yes. Let's go ahead and give them, uh, baseball themed positions. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Oh, he's, oh, that's right, like a catcher. Good, good. Yeah, this is fun, it's like Pictionary. I don't know what he's holding, but okay. Great, Sandra, come over here and move Mark for me real quick. And uh, while she's doing that, we will start this scene off and see it in five, four, three, two, one. All right, son, throw that old fastball in here to your dad. Oh boy, dad, I can't wait to throw the ball to you. <laughs> That was a real heater. Yeah, you thanks, really Dad. Fired it in there. Dad, I'm so excited that you came to play catch with me. I really appreciate it. Well, son, I, I know I've been busy. I know the law firm's been keeping me away for a long time, and I don't get to do. Thank you for your service, son. 
Uh, I know I, I enrolled you in the, the Marine babies. You've been overseas. I've been busy, and you've been overseas. Setting countries free with you and your other baby Marines. Dad, I want to thank you for your service. My service? My service? What are you talking about? You, you, everything that you've done for me, putting me into, into, the, into the service, without you, none of it would have been possible. Jesus, Lord, my dreams have come true. You've made my son a young man to be proud of. I'm so proud of you, son. Get over here, give your dad a hug. Dad, surprise, I'm Jesus. You've done good. You've done good. Can it be true? I, I fathered the Messiah? It's true. It's true you did. You, you did such great things. You did such great things, and, and I'm proud of you. That must be how you made that baseball float in the air for like five seconds earlier. And That's exactly right. Scene. <laughs> Sandra, great job. Give her a round of applause. It's Sandra, everybody. Thank you so much. You guys, that was really beautiful and touching. Well, thanks. Yeah, Literally who, who, touching. Very touching. Who wants touching. the bell for this next thing? Oh, I'd love right. to do the bell. You want the bell? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Great. Uh, keep, keep it going for Sandra, everybody. That was fantastic. <laughs> Baseball, bringing people together. All right. So, guys, for this, for this next thing we're going to do, we, we've given Mark a bell. And uh, what he's going to do for the next scene is uh, Tara and I will be doing a scene like we normally do. Mm -hmm. But anytime Mark hears a line of dialogue that he's not a fan of, he might ring that bell. And we're going to have to change what we did, uh, what we just said to what we should have said. Yep. Which is why we call this game should have said. said. Right? So it might be something like, uh, oh, uh, I'm just going to go grab my coat, the dog, a shotgun. Great. Right? So, Such a quick thinker. Yeah, Mark, Mark gets what he wants using the bell. So, uh, so uh, a scene for Tara and I. Where, where is a place that two friends might meet? The beach. The beach, the sure. Beach. I also heard an abandoned warehouse. Yeah, <laughs> Let's meet at an abandoned warehouse. Abandoned warehouse. <laughs> abandoned warehouse. Okay, we'll see this scene in an abandoned warehouse in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Tina? Turn off the lights. Shelly? Wanda? Miranda? Miranda, is it's, that you? It's me, Miranda. Turn off the lights? Turn them off. What? I asked you to meet me in this abandoned warehouse for a reason, Doug. What, well, what, what could possibly be the reason? going to commit a crime. I need my nails done. The damn GPS just gets me lost every time. So your GPS So it's you. just, I put in Publix, for God's sake, this is where we ended up. Abandoned warehouse in Portland. I don't know. Why do I have to turn off the lights then? Because I don't want you to see me in oh. my shame. Oh, Miranda. <laughs> Oh, Miranda, come on. Plenty of people get lost using a GPS. I don't understand technology. I'm hungry. This is a good spot for my butt to look nice. Different See? position. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn on the lights so I can get a click. Yeah, it's looking nice. Click. All right. Miranda. Why do we have to pretend like there isn't something between us? Like this chair? <laughs> what did I call you? Kurt? Doug? Doug. That's part of the problem, Doug. You're not memorable. I, I hate that name. 
Hi. <laughs> um, surprise. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Oh my God. Good Lord, M Miranda. I've been hired to kill you. Oh no. It's true. You know who the enemy is. Yeah. The green grocer down the street. The Teamsters Union. My ENT. <laughs> my, my mom hired you to kill me? My sweet mom? That's right. She felt like, uh, you know, it was kind of a mistake having you, and she's just finally made a decision about it. Because I, I, haven't, I haven't given her any grandbabies yet. That's, That's why. right. Because that time that I uh, clogged the toilet and then left the house. Because I, I, uh, I, I ate all her uh, yo play. Because I made dad leave. Because I burned all her hair off. Yes. She's hideous now. Yeah. It won't grow back. No. And your mother was nothing without her looks. Look, Miranda. <laughs> and, and your mom hates wigs. Just hates them. Yeah. Like, really angry. Miranda, I don't, I don't believe you could pull that trigger. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. Kablam! <laughs> oh! I really Holy shit, you could do it. I, oh. thought, the I thought the bell was going to ring. <laughs> Essie! <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. I think, we, I think we got, uh, we've got time for, I think, one more here. Yeah. So, uh, Is this just lines for a phone? Yeah, we need, uh, yeah. We need yeah. help from uh, one more person, but uh, we need a specific kind of help. We need you. We need your smartphone. And we need your smartphone, oh, oh. and it has a lot of texts we've on got, it. We've got a lot um, of texts. Neolithic matriarchy. Yes, this gentleman is ready. Is very He's, eager. Yes. Here, uh, give, give it to uh, the, uh, There you go. What's your name? David. 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 All right. Thank you so right. much, David. What a brave guy. Okay. All right. So. Uh, all right, to go. All right. right. So in this next scene, we can talk as we normally would, except for yeah. Mark. Mark has David's cell, uh, cell phone. And he can only speak lines of dialogue that are texts from David's phone. So David is very brave. He's given us his phone. So Mark can only read lines of dialogue that are texts in the phone. The rest of us are just going to have to figure out what's going on here. Yeah. Right? So um, uh, what, what, what's, what's a part of this convention that you're looking forward to? Maybe at one, one of the happenings or something going on a little later. The Toddler Fight Club. The Toddler Fight Club. That's a thing? OK. Is that a metaphor or is that literal? What, 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 what was that? They're going to oh. summon Ayn Rand from the dead. Gotcha, okay. The, they call it the summoning. Okay, also like a thing that's actually happening. The what? Taking a class. We're, gonna, we're just going to distill it down to taking, taking a class. Taking a class. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Taking a class. We'll see this in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. I'm hearing a lot of good things about this class. I know, I'm really excited yeah, to be here. Yeah, the professor is supposed to be amazing. It's you scary. want a digital camera that takes pictures, correct? Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yes, yes, yes yeah, of yeah, course, we, we totally. Yeah. We know we have to take pictures of your lecture because, you, you know, you don't, you don't let us take notes. Ah, got it. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited to learn. No. Oh. I see you have to have the final project by 5-2 or 5-9. Uh, let's go for the later date. Let's go. Five, 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 nine, five, nine. Five, that would be great. May 9th. Yes, we, it's a big project. Oh, we. We're, we're, we're honored that you chose us to have the, the project, though, Professor. It's, uh... we're, we're ready to deliver. I mean, we really want this. I found a Sony XDHD PDW F800 camcorder. Holy wow. shit. You just found Dude, that? Someone left just... it? It does. Thank you. Wow. Um, well, did you, I don't really feel, I feel like this is a little illegal, yeah, just did, like... Did you give it to the lost and found? It could be that a former student, like a, in one of the previous classes, left right. it. I just thought, will you need a slate to sync picture to sound? <laughs> uh, well, I guess yeah. that's a good enough reason. Yeah, yeah. No, you, and you do need a slate to sla uh, sync, sync the picture. picture to, well, I mean, that's why we're here. You're the best at it. Yeah. Yes. We're here to learn from you. Yes. yes. Yeah. I downloaded the sound card. Jesus, is that even possible? 
to download, to download a, a sound, sound card? This guy is light years ahead of the industry. We, listen, if you're able to produce matter from nothing, we actually have a request. Um, there's this author, Ayn Rand. We'd like for her to be, come back to life, and we heard you could do that. Back to back, like before? Yes, oh, okay. she's all right. All right. Right. All right. Um, all right. This is, we're tell us what we need to do. Super you're, uncomfortable position you're for in me. Charge. Back F Y F Y I. Yes. It's usually a young man who comes. Oh no! Oh. I, she's a woman. He's really he's really nice. Okay. But please don't leave your money laying out. Oh, oh okay. wow! Uh, all right. Is... Well, I'm I'm a little older, but maybe it'll still work. Okay. Uh, Three things. Okay. One. Yes. I met someone last night from KSET who says they hire interns all the time. Oh. That's... Two. She's going to need a job when she comes back, so that's... Yeah, that's great. Maybe she could start there. Two. Yeah. I saw. And three. Yes. This is really cryptic. Did it... Did it work? I mean, is she was, back? Is she back? Did the, was that just it? The three steps? He said he saw. Where is she? Ein? Ein? Oh, no. Ein? Ein? Got it. Oh, God. Oh! Wow, she is a lot shorter than I thought she'd yeah. be. I'll be fine. You got a message. <laughs> she says only uh, every man for himself. <laughs> oh. She's leaving. <laughs> that was it? That's the whole message? Yeah, I guess we're on our own. You like, write thousands? Like she always said. Made a reservation with the Daily Grill for 1.30. <laughs> Spoke to Susan, who said she will be there. Hopefully, they will have it this time. <laughs> See! And scene! <laughs> Thank you for your phone, David. Thank yeah, you very much. nice work. Ah, well, it was uh, fun. Yeah, have you guys had a good time? Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, again, we are Dad's Garage. We're here in Atlanta. We're over in Old Fourth Ward. Yeah, we're shows. just a couple miles down the road. We're if you want to Uber and catch so a show, so you can always go to dadsgarage.com and find out what we got going on. We're there every week, so come on by, poke your head through the door, and see what we do. But you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for listening to us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hit for Dad's Garage.